Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the uh, show today. We're talking about the growth of Nashville and uh, how the housing population uh, in Nashville. And, and Mr. Zerker, let's see if we can talk in terms of some of the solutions, okay. in terms of some of the issues that we've already talked about. How, how do you see it from your perspective? Good. Um, well, this is a booming town. This is an it city. Uh, the revision of, of this city um, with all the major developments is here. They have a 25 year plan. Uh, the East Bank in itself, they're talking about 12,000 units. This is a whole lot of major development. Uh, there's no, if you look at the, uh, the, the uh, builders, the uh, contractors, the uh, uh, construction workers, uh, you don't see certain folk out there that are carpenters, plumbers, mm -hmm. uh, uh, roofers, uh, bricklayers, all the things that it take to build a house. You go around this town and you'll see that there's uh, discriminatory uh, faces. Mm -hmm. There's, it, it, when I was coming up, they had high schools where it was, you came to school mandatory, but you could go to shop. You could learn how to be a plumber, mm -hmm. learn how to do these other things. One of the solutions is to get back into some of that. They've got a thing where maybe you go to Job Corps uh, uh, through Martha O'Brien. I think that's one solution of it. But it needs to be a bigger thing. OIC you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. I was a, a product of OIC. I became a welder and a first class welder overall. Uh, but that was that's a solution. Uh, one of the other problems when it comes to new development and there's no new development for poor folk. Um, if you look around this city. With all this, these uh, crane, I'll call it Crane City, mm -hmm. with all the cranes that are going up for hotels and for, for all this new development, but there's no revenue, uh, or should we say crumbs from the master's table uh, that could trinkle down in 2% or 3% that would help support new development for poor folk. Mm -hmm. This real estate here in the city is booming, and so the greed uh, is preventing uh, our new mayor, mm -hmm. who uh, who was commissioner over uh, the homeless uh, for uh, for a spell before she became my mayor. I've I've shared with her my concerns, uh, but they would spend so many million dollars on a sidewalk mm -hmm. because of, of a child who uh, mother put a, a little posting on it saying we need better sidewalks. Mm -hmm. They jumped right on that. But, uh, when they talk about better schools and even a superintendent. Now they're willing to pay from 160000 to 380000 for a new superintendent. All these things are part of that rezoning and, mm -hmm. and all these, but, it's, but the solution still has to be uh, for the least of these mm -hmm. uh, because that's, that's, what, uh, that's the Christian way, mm -hmm. and in God we trust. And so uh, uh, the poor, yes, will be with us always, but we need to look at the poor and, and, and bring them along with us. Mm -hmm. The Section 8 is of uh, the slum lawyers. They are borrowing money and fixing up their places. Yeah, I think it was a place called Howard Garden. They advertised everybody's lease was not being renewed. Mm -hmm. That's going on all over the city too mm -hmm. because they're redoing their properties so where they can get that market value rent. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the Barnes funds um, where they're inviting folks into the city, which is 55,000 area medium mm -hmm. income. You're talking about gentrification, the haves and the mm -hmm. have less, not the have nots. Mm -hmm. And so the solution to some of these problems are to inc be inclusive. You know, they call it integration now, mm -hmm. you know, because of the folks who's moving back into town. Mm -hmm. But it's still uh, 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 a gentrification. It, 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 yeah. it leaves a large number of uh, individuals who are not as uh, Wealthy or as, uh, financially yes, financial, able, yes, and even uh, Section Eight, which at one time was able to sort of uh, provide oh, absolutely. funds for individuals to rent to out support that. these, yes, sir. but now uh, they're not renting to and, them. And, and I would imagine piece of paper. has the money in Section Eight gone up any in terms of uh, the, the money is available, but uh, and they're giving out vouchers left and right. But people are saying, I mean, you know, they come to me all the time. Where can I do? you know where I can find a place to live? I'm saying, I'm sorry, that's a Nobody problem. Nobody can afford, uh, none well, of the owners. Well, they're not renting to that's, Section to 8 folks. Section 8 folks. They're renting to these folks and they're being compensated 20% by the bonds for funds mm -hmm. uh, with the with their have less. Mm -hmm. You know, but what about the have nots, the $9,000, $18,000 a year incomes? Mm -hmm. They can't afford this mm -hmm. your type of rent, you know, and they're being forced out to, by the way. Mm -hmm. Pastor, a, yeah. Pastor Walker, talk, speak to that. 
Yeah, you know, it's, when you talk about the poor and people need to understand, we're not talking about just people just broke, don't have any money, you know, and we talk about uh, affordable housing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, housing that people can afford. You know, you got a lot of people that are living right at the poverty line level or just above it or slightly below it. And people that are working jobs, Dr. Haney, and still cannot afford, you know, the high cost of rentals that's, that's going, you know, as consistently and continuously begins to escalate and people just can't afford it. So they're being pushed out. And then at the same time, you know, wages are not increasing. Um, mm -hmm. Affordable housing developments are not going up, but they're every time you look around, there are more and more and more of the high dollar rentals. Mm -hmm. and, and what's going to happen when you get to a point where you got all this property out here, all these rental places out here mm -hmm. and you can't rent them? because the people here are not making the kinds of monies that's needed to rent these places. And then, then like I said, you're pushing a lot of people out into the, uh, the streets and they're becoming homeless and they're the working homeless. They got, they got jobs. They're not drug addicted. They're not, they're not, they're not having the, the, some of the typical issues that people have when they're homeless. They're just people that can no longer afford to live where they're living. Even, you know, it, when you don't even consider Section A, if you just take Section A off the table, you got somebody that, that's working and been paying their rentals and stuff like that and not on Section A because they had a job that's paying enough money to be able to afford the mm -hmm. places where they've been renting in the neighborhoods where they've been accustomed to living. Mm -hmm. And now with the changes in these neighborhoods and the high cost of rents in these neighborhoods and you got so many people who are buying houses now as opposed to people buying them and flipping them in terms of selling them, mm -hmm. people are buying them, renovating them and turn them into rental problem properties because the high cost of rentals around here so people are able to make money of course you know you pay for your property that you bought mm -hmm. you know through the rentals and stuff like that so it's a win-win situation for everybody except those the uh that's not making the money on, yeah who depend they, on being able to live absolutely, in those houses absolutely so, mm -hmm. and, uh -huh. and something else he said that was significant and that was uh when when it with Casey moving out of Casey into Casey because when they when they tore down John Henry Hill and, and the other projects in mm. East Nashville and Preston Taylor and stuff like that, people had to move out. And then the criteria to get back in, so many of them Not couldn't move back yeah. in uh -huh. and had been living there for years. Mm -hmm. So then they create these neighborhoods way out. Mm -hmm. And you uh, Cane Ridge area, all the way down in there. You go around these streets, mm -hmm. no Ice street lights. And, and they put them in these little isolated mm -hmm. communities mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. away from everything. If you don't have transportation, mm -hmm. you don't get out of there because there are no bus, no, no, uh, mm -hmm. no bus services out there. So, you know, it, it's, it's almost like you, you're... The reservation type thing yes, that you, you you mentioned to earlier yeah. mentioned mm -hmm. earlier you know mm -hmm. and it's it's a sad situation and mm -hmm. something you know something needs to happen I don't know what's going to happen but I can envision at some point you're going to be dealing with some ghost town type of situation mm -hmm. because you're going to build all these structures and stuff and you're not going to have the people mm -hmm. that's making the kind of money, money that these things call for you. yeah uh -huh. absolutely so uh -huh. you know it's something's got uh -huh. to give on that. Uh -huh. The, you are over, over, overpricing, uh, have the houses so priced that the individuals who need housing yeah. can't afford to buy them yeah, or, or, or to rent them Absolutely. or whatever and et cetera. And so, okay. And, 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 and finally, uh, Mr. Zerker, yes. uh, you, we've got about a minute. Some final comments in reference to this. Well, uh, as a final comment.